What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle with the first episode of Invisible Ink, which is a game by Clay Entertainment, the brain trust that developed Don't Starve, Mark of the Ninja, and a bunch of other successful indie games. Invisible Ink is a turn-based stealth strategy roguelike that is very, very difficult. Ultimately, the game randomly generates floors that you have to spy and espionage your way through up to level 10. There will not be a whole lot of shooty, shooty, stabby, stabby. There will, however, be some kung fu, so I may karate chop some fools in the throat. Somebody might get shot somewhere through the middle. I mean, there are are guns, they're just kind of not as well stocked on the ammunitions that you might hope. But Invisible Ink is a roguelike which randomly generates a 10 layer corporate building that you have to infiltrate, or I don't even know if it's a government building or what the hell it's supposed to be. And along the way, you will see, look at the top right hand corner, my average floor is 2. I am really bad at this game. I'm just going to start out by saying that stealth is not my forte. I'm that guy that just like headbutts the problem until it goes away and then complains about having a headache. And so I can reasonably assess that during the course of this series we're going to be playing very, very poorly. However, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my- I'll promise you that. I'll do my best not to be a total and complete screw up during this run, but I can't promise anything. I mean, my record really sort of speaks for itself. And a record should only really speak if it's on a turntable to be honest, but let's go to new game. And we get to choose a team that we want to deploy into this mission with. And so we can choose between the Acme Agency, which comes with Deckard and Dr. Peddler. For right now, everybody has the same generic skills, but everybody also has like a special ability. And so Deckard has stealth, which allows him to move a little bit further. Dr. Peddler has a wireless interface, which allows him to hack from a distance and also allows him to scan for machinery in neighboring rooms. We can go with the cleaners. The cleaners are a little bit more violent. Now with the, these guys right here, they're strong melee, so Dr. Peddler's really good at knocking fools out, but Decker is not so good at fighting, so you have no range supremacy at all with this group. With the cleaners, the cleaners are a little bit more ranged oriented. You start out with Shalem 11, and so Shalem 11 is a sniper, but he makes up for being a sniper by being really, really slow, like he doesn't move around very well. At the moment, Red is basically the same thing as Dr. Peddler, the only difference is that she has strong scanning which allows her to go eight tiles out instead of five tiles out like Dr. Peddler does. The Soviets, which are actually, I like the Soviets quite a bit. And so with the Soviets, you've got Nika Lubov, who has martial training, which means that she can use two-handed weapons just like Shalem can. We've also got Jolie Banks Murphy. Jolie Banks Murphy is a master hacker, which means you get extra CPUs for hacking consoles. We'll talk about those in a little bit. And she also has the same ability that Decker has, where she can move a little bit further. And so basically what you're looking at, if you're trying to choose a team, Extra melee and decent move speed, but no range. Ranged ability, de eh, ranged ability, not a whole lot of movement. Also kind of has problem with melee. And the Soviets has problems with melee, but these guys are really, really mobile and have the ability to upgrade in a range sense later on. I think for the purpose of this, we're going to stick with the defaults. We'll go with Acme Agency. I do like the Soviets the best. They are my favorite. And so in this case, what I always try and do when I do these LPs, for better or worse, is I try and do something that I'm not used to. And so in this case, we're going to go ahead and do Acme Agency, even though it would probably be better for the playthrough if I did the Soviets, just because I want to do something different. And so here it is. It's going to give us the layout of the operation we're going to be going. We start on floor one, obviously, because we can't get para dropped in onto the top floor. That would be way too simple. Let's go ahead and accept that. Establishing the net link. We could peek around. Okay. It was just giving us tips, and I decided to read them for some reason. Our team has now entered the complex. We'll have a look around. Let's talk about the way that the game functions. And so these little pips above their heads, those are their APs. Those allow them to participate in actions as they go along. If we click on a character, you will see down here in the bottom left that you get the super awesome animated portrait. You get the Overwatch ability if you have a gun. We don't have a gun, so that's not really going to be available. We have Peek. We have Run, which allows you to take way more movement points, but it makes noise. And it kind of lets you, well, I mean, it lets guards hear you, essentially. It makes bad things happen. And so you won't see me use run a whole lot unless I'm really trying to get the hell out of a level We have dr. Peddler who has a couple of abilities he's got wireless admitter and he's got run and he's got peak just like everybody else And then the center bar right here is their starting devices Decker has cloaking rigs. He has two of them to allow him to go invisible for one turn They aren't incredibly useful, but they can get the job done in a pinch if you really find yourself screwed and without luck 
Dr. Peddler comes with shock traps, which you can place on a door, which means that conceivably we could open a door, bait a guard, put the shock trap on, and then walk away, and the guard will get blown the hell up when he tries to come look for us. It's really, really useful. I've been able to deploy them to good effect a couple times throughout the course, and the effects are quite shocking, and so there is your pun of the day. Obviously, it was quite expected. You know, you can't walk away without making it. You have to. It's the action movie thing. It is the Bruce Willis thing to do. He also comes with a medical gel, which allows you to res one of your guys. It's important to note that you have one HP in this game. One shot kills all characters. They kill you, they kill the enemy, doesn't matter. Now the Soviets come with these things called, I get they're like field emitters. It's basically a force field where they get two HP. The first shot is absorbed by their force field. But, by and large, everybody in this game pretty much dies instantaneously whenever anything goes wrong. This game is a big one for just things falling apart. Things will be going swimmingly and then all of a sudden everything collapses on you. That's almost the way that this game goes to a T every single time. It's very much a roguelike in that respect. I'm gonna hack this thing right here. And so you may be saying, why do you want to hijack CPUs? What do those do? Well, if I press the space bar, we go into the hacking mode, and CPUs allow us to hack devices. And so as you go through the game, it's very, very good to have a lot of CPUs because they allow you to unlock doors, they allow you to unlock safes, they allow you to disable cameras, turrets, all kinds of other stuff. And so getting a nice stockpile of CPUs is always in your best interest. At the top left corner, you'll also see credits. These credits will allow us to buy equipment, upgrade our characters, and bribe guards. You can do all kinds of good things with them. But for right now, not a whole lot to do. The other mechanic that we need to be aware of is in the top right hand corner, we have the alarm. Every turn, the alarm goes up. Every five ticks right here, it increases the alarm level, and so after five pips, we'll go up to level one, which means the cameras will be activated. After five more pips, it'll go up to level two, which means the turrets will be activated. After three, I think you get strike teams or something like that. And that's the maximum level that you'll get to. Now, Clay has implemented this, and it's a little bit of a controversial feature. A lot of people don't like it because they want to play at their own pace, and they don't get why this goes up even if you haven't been seen. I understand that from a logical sense, but the gameplay design was implemented in order to make you feel rushed, basically. It, this game really wants you to feel panicked and make decisions with your time. Decisions that have consequences, and believe me, if I'm really bad at this game. You will see some consequences. So first things first, let's hijack some CPUs with Dr. Peddler because it is a free action. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put... We can either split our forces right now, and we can operate in different directions, or we can have them move in line with each other, or we can have one of them act in tangent off of the other one's actions. Not necessarily tied to the other one, but able to act off of them. I'm going to put Peddler up against the wall right here, and I think I'm going to act the way that I said, working as a team. We're going to open this door up. Opening doors is a free action. Then what you want to do is you can peek around the corner using this button right here. It costs you a movement point, but it should reveal what's in the room. And so in this case, we have Wast allows you to move the screen around, by the way, in case you were wondering how it's panning and scanning around the map. We have a guard right here. He has a heart monitor, and so murdering the guard outright is not an option. If you kill this guard and he dies, you gain alarm level. And so a lot of the time, violence is not going to be the answer in this game. You really need to take care of business without killing anybody. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move Dr. Peddler in. Dr. Peddler's going to do a takedown. hoop -da! Choked out! Ooh! And then we can steal from him too. Add insult to injury, we beat him up and we take his lunch money. It's not good enough to knock out a guard. You have to knock the guard out and you have to take all of his money that he was going to be spending on fruit roll-ups. And so there it is, $100 for fruit roll-ups and that'll buy a hell of a lot of fruit roll-ups. Now there's a mechanic right here that you'll get it on the tip screen, but I don't know if they talk about it in the tutorial, but I wanted to talk about it just in case because I didn't notice this for a little while. When you knock somebody out, it puts this little number above their head, and this is not the part that is hard to distinguish. But anyways, this means that you've got two turns until he wakes up. He's sleeping. That seems like a really nice way to say that he's knocked the hell out. It's kind of like that term they use in the UK for homeless people, like rough sleepers. It's the exact same thing. Those little Zs are kind of our way of just polishing over the fact that we brutally knocked him out. But if you leave somebody sitting on top of his knocked out body, so basically if you sit on his corpse, he can't revive. And so what you want to do is in the next turn, we'll have Decker come down here and sit on the corpse and make sure he doesn't wake up. I don't know if that entails him just sitting there and punching him in the face repeatedly every time he starts to gain some semblance of like awareness. I'm not really sure how we keep him knocked out, but he stays knocked out if you put a character on top of that same tile. And so it's a very good suppression mechanic to make sure that nobody ever runs up on you from behind while you're exploring. We're going to take Decker and we're going to put him down to right here. Now, we don't see any trails on the ground. If there were any other guards, we would see these little patrol trails. You have a little bit of sentient... I guess you have a little bit of... I don't want to say sentient. It's a little bit of a... 
omniscience when it comes to the movement of guards and things like that. I suppose we can reasonably blame that on the fact that we have intel on the place or something, but patrols will be marked to make your life a little bit easier and it doesn't make your life that much easier. This game is really, really difficult. One thing I will say about this game, it is it as hard as, I don't know, it's it's harder than a John Thomas in the morning. I'm not really sure, it's, it's a really, really rough game. So anyways, let's go ahead and we'll skip our turn since we're done here. And as you will see at the end of our turn, the floor alarm has gone up. I'm gonna have Decker come up to this wall and he's gonna peek it. And so there's a safe in this room. And so we're gonna turn it into a not so safe in the interest of repeating my joke that I always make in these series. Uh, actually, we only have five CPUs. I don't know if that's the best plan. It's going to take us three CPUs to unlock this safe. We may not get the amount out of it that we think we're going to get. Then on the other side, we may get really, really good loot out of it, like a gun or something, which will make our lives way easier over the course of the playthrough. Sometimes the ability to outright murder somebody is a premium ability when you're trying to get through one of these places. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and continue moving Decker around. I'm going to move... Let's move Dr. Peddler over here, and we will open up that door, and we'll say next turn. He's down to one. Let me go ahead and sit Decker on top of him, so that this doesn't go very, very wrong for us. We'll peek the corner. There's another guard right there. There's also a camera that's going to go active in two turns. So there are a few things we need to accomplish here. First and foremost, God, once this camera goes live, unfortunately we can't pre-hack the camera, which would be what I would want to do. We can't pre-hack it, so we've got to wait until the camera goes live. So what I want to do is, since these guards aren't patrolling, I'm just going to close the door, and let's go ahead and take care of this safe. We get one CPU per turn, so it's not that big of a deal. And we're going to secure the loot here. And once the cameras go live, we'll hack those, then we'll take out the guard. Because right now we're going to get caught in the hallway with the cameras turning on right when we're sitting there. Just be like, oh, hey, what's going on, guys? Just sneaking through your super awesome corporate espionage building. You know, just trying to steal all your datas. Dr. Peddler gets 200 credits. A worthwhile bonus for him, but unfortunately there was no loot in the crate. A little disappointing right there, but can't be helped. All right, so now the cameras are live. What we want to do now is we're going to open this up. Let's peek it one more time to make sure the guard is in the right spot. And what I want to accomplish, you see these red spots on the floor? Those are locations that if you go into them, something will see you. This is another mechanic that I wasn't really aware of because I don't play tutorials and I don't do smart things like learn games. And if you step into any red square on the ground, you're going to get discovered in one aspect or another. So it may be like a motion sensor, it could be a sound sensor, it could be a camera, it could be a guard. It's just about anything that's really going to give you away and increase your alarm level. So let's disable both of these. That kind of puts us in a hurting situation for CPUs. But we'll be okay, I think. And we're going to wait a turn. What we want to do now... Oh, there's another one right there. Okay, so let's hack that one too. So all three cameras. This is actually quite the nasty room right here. And what we need to do is we need to leapfrog. And so Decker... I'm sorry, Peddler's in here. Knock him out. He's now down. We steal from the body. And then we also loot the body because there's good stuff on it. Oh, a pass card. Nice. He's got a full inventory though, so he can't carry it. Which means Decker needs to get the hell over here. So Decker, run away. You're back here, close the door, and this guard will wake up on the floor. He's not going to go out and explore. One of the weird things about the guards is that they don't really seem to care that they've been knocked the hell out. Like, maybe I'm a vengeful person, but if I got knocked out, I'd be looking for the guy responsible, especially if he looked as awesome as Decker. I'd be like, this is not okay. I need to make this better because I've been knocked out by a guy in a trench coat and a fedora, and I really just kind of need to redeem myself at this point. On ending the turn... He wakes up, and he is going to look around. He is aware that something happened, but he's just going to start kind of panning and scanning around the room. He's more than likely not going to come after us. Even so, that being the case, we're going to continue our leapfrogging activities here. I'm going to move Peddler out to this... I'm sorry, I'm going to move... Yeah, Peddler out to this door. We're going to sit Decker on top of this corpse, or on top of this pre-corpse, I guess. If he gets too antsy, he'll be a corpse. For right now, as long as he stays in a state of stupor, or as long as he remains in his forceful torpor... I will not get angry at him and murder him. If this guy decides to move around, we may have a problem on our hands, though. Let's use Peddler to open this door. And you see this right here? That means there's a guard patrolling along that way. So we need to get a feel for this room. What the hell is that? I've never even seen that before. It takes six CPUs to hack the turret. 
Okay, what is this? A turret power supply? Or we can just knock the turret out. I think that if we hack the turret, it joins our side or something and murders people. However, you see this arrow right here? This is where we're trying to get to. The ultimate goal in this game is to arrive in an elevator. And that is the elevator of our choosing. Unfortunately, there's a guard around. There's a turret that's going to activate on the next turn. And so I think we should probably just disable this. Let's go ahead and knock the turret out for now. And we're just going to watch this patrol, I think, and see where it goes. I'm going to use my remaining CPUs to hack this. 200 credits in the safe. Not, it's enough money to upgrade us, but we want to save our credits because there are other agents that we can hire. You see how we have an empty party slot and everything? Oh, well, we don't have an empty party slot. That's our mainframe. But anyways, what I'm saying here, what I'm trying to elucidate is that we can get more party members along the way. We can hire them with money. And so I tend to save my money for having excess party members because it's better to have numbers in this game than it is to have... You know, super awesome gear, super awesome stats, at least in my opinion. If we wanted to upgrade our guys, we would click on this right here. It would take us to their skills list. And all of these little pips right here, I could go through... Well, we'll talk about it. So, strength stat. It makes you knock people out for one turn longer. Each time you upgrade it, it knocks guys out for one turn longer. So, Peddler does two turns right now. It's his special ability. He would do three turns if I upgraded it. There's stealth. It allows you to move around a little bit quicker without using the run mode. There's shield. This gives you the force field that the Soviets start out with. There's hacking. Hacking allows you to get more CPUs out of those little nodes that we saw earlier along. We have inventory. Gives you another inventory slot. Fairly self-explanatory. We've got marksman. Allows you to use better guns. So some weapons will have like a marksman limit on them. You'll need like level 2 or level 3 marksman in order to use them. Negotiator allows you to bribe guards for less cash. And anarchy allows you to steal from guards better. And so now you guys know everything that we're able to use. Decker's going to continue sitting on this guy's face. I don't think he minds anyways. He was lining up for mustache rides yesterday, so I figure this is kind of just like a bonus for him with regards to the work that he does for the company. Let's close the door right there. And I'm actually going to sneak around this way and see what happens. We're about to escalate here. Oh, no. Oh, things have gone wrong. Okay, and so we have a guard that's come in and unfortunately caught us with our pants down. I didn't effectively make note of the fact that he was going to be coming into this room. You see that red trail on the ground? That meant that during his turn he was going to move in here. I Can I hide in that corner? No, not enough movement points. Okay, well, I don't want to give myself away. So let's go ahead and hide in the corner and we're going to wait and see what this guy does. I'm going to do my best to knock him out on the next turn. But... I can't guarantee that this is going to work. And so what we want to do now is run up right here. We'll use takedown. So he's knocked the hell out. We'll loot his body. Oh, never mind. We can loot Decker's body. Can I use medical gel on him? Okay, so Decker's back up, and we need him to sit on these corpses. We got both guys sitting on corpses right now, but that's a little unfortunate because that puts us in a position where we can't advance very effectively. And I think our best plan right now... Let's hang out for a turn. And we can either make a break for this way, or we can make a break for this way. I think my goal is going to be to go back this way. Oh, I forgot to pick up his key card. He looks awfully, like, dour about his job. He does not seem stoked about the fact that he has to be at work today. It's okay, I never feel stoked about the fact that I'm at work either. He should just investigate this body for the next turn. He shouldn't come and bother us. Let's get everybody into position to move around this way. And so as you can see, there's a whole lot of just kind of shifting positions this game in this game. And just like moving around and trying to make sure that all of your lovely little activities are not discovered by the guards. Oh, that's not good. So a bunch of guards just zoned in. And we have very little. This is the strike team that I was talking about. We have very little choice right now. I think they're overwatching too, or maybe they've just spotted us. It's going to cost us a lot of money to bribe them. I didn't think about the fact that they were going to infiltrate from the other direction.
I mean, I don't know if this is going to work or not. But we can give it a go. And so having it neutralized, I told you, stealth is not the thing that I do. This is, this is a bad plan for me. So having knocked out these guys, we now have to decide what we want to do with our time. We can steal from him. What does he have? 100 bucks. Let's go over here, and I'm going to open this door. And I'm going to take my chances and peek it. We've got a little bit of time on our hands. I don't know what happens with level 4, but I'm guessing we should probably get the hell out of here right, like right now. So in the interest of that activity... Oh, and we've been caught up on a camera too. And this is what happens. You start to rush, and then bad things happen. I'm going to hack both those CPUs and absorb those into our mainframe. We'll move Decker out. We'll close this door. We'll get rid of you. We'll step over to here. Let me get Decker out of line of sight just in case when the door opens there's like a guard standing right here. We'll open that door. We'll peek it. And we may just make a sprint for the elevator. It might be our best plan. I mean, we could hack that right there and grab some more gear, but... Given the way that things are going, I think it's probably our best plan just to disengage this one now. If I do run, can I make it over there? It looks like I can if I do run. And they're going to be coming into this room. God. Alright, so the guards are basically onto us. And he can make it. And so we sprint for the door, and we escape. And so there it is. 87% map exploration, 100 credits for exploring, and then we also get 50 credits for a clean sweep, which means we didn't murder anybody. I'm going to do the second floor in the next episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for this first episode of Invisible Ink. I look forward to seeing you all next time we play the game. I do find this game to be very, very pleasurable, even though I'm very, very bad at it. And I know that's a lot of very varies in the title, much like Very, Very Barry or Very, Very Larry. I don't know. Is there a guy named Very, Very Larry? He seems like the kind of guy that would be wearing like an Aloha shirt and just hanging out at the club with his chest hair hanging out. Very, Very Larry. His license plate would, see, it would say V-R-Y Lair or something like that. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.